Hey, what'd I miss? We were just tiny. It takes two to make a thing go right. So now we have the 20th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It seems like there's no stopping Kevin Feige and friends, but how was the movie? Well, let's find out. My name is Brandon Kedavery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Ant-Man and the Wasp. I really do appreciate it. And so, like I said in my intro, this is the 20th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Ant-Man and the Wasp. It is the sequel to Ant-Man, which came out in 2015, July 2015, right after um, Avengers Age of Ultron, and I have it right here. My expectations for this film were mediocre to low. I was very disappointed that Edgar Wright, the uh, R2 Edgar Wright, stepped away from the film and Peyton Reed came in. Uh, Peyton Reed is the director of um, the first Ant-Man. He also did Yes Men with Jim Carrey and Bring It On, which came out in uh, 99, 2000, something like that. Uh, one of my favorite movies of all time. Not top 10, not top 20, top, top 100, but if I were to list maybe 500 of my favorite movies of all time, Bring It On would probably be on there. But anyway, Peyton Reed is coming back. Um, to direct this sequel, uh, my expectations for this film were um, were pretty you know, mediocre. I, w I was interested in seeing it, but I just wasn't like super duper excited. Like this was, you know, Black Panther or uh, Avengers Infinity War. But I thought Peyton Reed did a, a very great job with the first film. And, uh, you know, so I had uh, somewhat some uh, mediocre hopes for this one. Now, what it's about, like I said, it's a sequel to the first film. It's also kind of a sequel to uh, Captain America Civil War. And uh, there's a little hints of Avengers Infinity War, which I'll talk about later on. But if you saw Captain America Civil War, you know that Scott Lang got uh, captured. But at the end, Captain America freed them. But with the technology of the big Ant-Man suit being on the news, destroying airports in Germany and things like that, you have to wonder, well, aren't they going to go after the people that created the technology? Hank Pym, played by Michael Douglas, and uh, his daughter, uh, Janet Van Dyne, played by Evangeline Lilly. Of course, so that is the uh, premise of the movie. Scott Lang is on house arrest for getting captured. Um, you know, he has a family. He doesn't want to be going around saving the world. And then the rest of these organizations are after uh, Hank Pym and Hope Van Dyne, or yeah, Hope Van Dyne, excuse me, I called her Janet Van Dyne a second ago. Um, to try to get the technology. First off, <clears throat> the film started off great. Um, that gave us more backstory of how Hank Pym's wife went into the quantum realm. And um, just the overall tone of the film is just something that I noticed at the very beginning. This is not anything like Black Panther. This is not an Infinity War. This is his own standalone film of comedy that has to do with uh, Marvel comic characters. And that's fantastic. And three characters that we have kind of at the forefront, or actually four characters that we have at the forefront of the comedy are Michael Pena, um, T.I., and David Desk. Mal Chien. I'm not too familiar how to pronounce his name, but um, I say that, and you know, they they were funny to me. I really like did like them in the film. They were all balanced. Uh, Michael Pena is kind of the leader of the group, and I remember when I saw the first film, Ant Man. Uh, Michael Pena was funny to me, but I think it was um, Earl Alberto Gonzalez. I, I forgot his name, but. He's somewhat popular in the film punditry world, and he was offended by Michael Pena's character, saying that, because uh, he's an Hispanic character, and the gentleman that, that I'm talking about is Hispanic too, and this was like, you know, my, I was offended because Michael Pena was put off as a clown, and um, I will agree to that, yes, but something that I noticed in this movie is, in uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp is, um, yes, Michael Pena and his character may have come across as a clown, but however, so did T.I. and uh, character Dave and also this other character named Kurt. So you had like a black guy, a white guy, and a brown uh, brown guy, you know, black, white, and brown, all kind, kind of, you know, seeming like clowns. So, you know, I, I don't know. It's kind of like Family Guy. I don't know if you watch that show. They uh, They make fun of a lot of groups of people, but they make fun of everybody. And they make fun of themselves. They're kind of like the Simpsons. So it's kind of, you know, uh, even there if you, um, you know, can kind of catch my drift. Uh, but I did like those three characters. Of course, Paul Rudd, he's back. 
um, as the leading man, Ant Man. He's great too. He has great comedic timing. Um, you know, he is uh, he's you know a leader in his own film, but I don't look at him as like a super duper hero either, like Captain America or Thor. He's like right there in the middle, and that's needed or whatever in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Somebody that you can take seriously but laugh at at the same time. I mean, even though I did laugh from Thor Ragnarok, I didn't go to laugh, but you know, it just had laughs. But uh, you know, that's great there. I, I said Evangeline Lily is great. Um, I don't know. It's just something about her that I found fascinating. Uh, but she's just a great act actress on screen. Um, one of the uh, well, no, I won't go there first. Uh, Michael Douglas is back as, um, you know, um, uh, Hank Pym. You know, he's fantastic as well. You know, he's great in everything that he did. He does pretty much the whole cast is fantastic um, about the relationships. I really did love the relationship between uh, Paul Rudd, Scott Lang and his daughter, Cassie. Um, I thought that was beautiful. Uh, he is on house arrest and he is going to make the best out of it. If he can't leave the house, he is going to build that house to be the most fun uh, thing possible for himself. So he doesn't go uh, lose his mind out of boredom. And also as for his daughter. Um, I love that. I love how, you know, she didn't really trust him or know what to think of our father in the first film. But now it's clear they have a great relationship. Um, they, they love each other. Um, I like the transition um, from the relationship of his uh, ex-wife and um, her new husband, which uh, what is his name again? I don't know. Is it? Is it is this it Bobby Can yeah Bobby Cannaval. Um he is the new uh husband of Ant Man's or Scott Lang's ex wife. And just, you know, they didn't like him in the very beginning in the in the first film, but you know, they're just like a nice blended family and I just think it's beautiful. And um, you know, it was a lot of growth as far as that's concerned in this film. And I see even more potential for growth in the third film if they do make a third Ant Man film. So um that is something that I do like. Um, there are some uh, new characters in this film. Uh, Jimmy Wu played by uh, Randall Park. I, I, I saw a couple of reviews of people really just did not care for him, uh, but I liked him myself. I thought, um, you know, he was kind of funny. Um, he may have been a little too goofy for the role he was trying to play um, in the real world being an FBI agent, but it wasn't that big of a deal for me. Um, I did like it. Lawrence Fishburne is in this as well uh, for a little bit. And, you know, I, um, I enjoyed him too. And uh, let's talk about the villains of the film since we're talking about the characters. We have Walton Goggins. He's playing the character of Sonny Birch. And then we also, um, excuse me, we also have Ghost. Uh, or Ava, played by Hannah John Kamen. I'm not too familiar with her work. Um, she was in Ready Player One and Black Mirror and just a few other things. Walton Goggins was in the Tomb Raider um, movie that came out in March of this year uh, based off the video game. And they're both the villains. And they were both fine. Um, the, you know, Paxton or not Paxton, excuse me. Um, what, what is his name? Sonny Birch. Walton Goggins as the the villain or the henchman. He was great. I think he served his purpose. He popped in and out of the film at all the right opportune times. You know, just somebody that's obsessed with money and wants to, uh, you know, be uh, in control of power and all that great stuff. As far as Ghost is concerned... It wasn't bad, but like, you know, we've been getting a lot of strong villains lately with, um, excuse me, Thanos and uh, with Josh Brolin. Michael B. Jordan uh, with Killmonger, um, the guy from Spider-Man Homecoming, Vulture, um, Michael Keaton, great villain, Hella, played by Kate Blanchett. Ava slash Ghost is nowhere near um, the level of those act, those performances. I understand her plight. I understand what she's going through, and I really do understand why she's angry and frustrated. I get it. But um, her acting was not bad, but I just kind of thought it just didn't match with the rest of the film i kind of just wanted to be even though i understood why she was upset i kind of just also wanted to be like will you please calm down just a little bit you know that may not make sense because given her state of of being and what would possibly happen to her if she didn't accomplish her goal but um i just kind of wanted her to calm down a little bit so she just wasn't a bad villain just wasn't the strongest villain as far as like the tech is concerned the technology and all the gizmos and gadgets and things like that i love it the the growing and the shrinking and this and that and uh how they expanded that universe literally and uh, metaphorically with the quantum realm or the microverse and things like that um i thought all the growing and the shrinking and all that was very clever it wasn't just a smooth ride for the characters in this movie sometimes their costumes 
um, were, um, um, what am I trying to say? Sometimes oh yeah, their costumes malfunction and it just didn't work properly. And I just kind of add a little bit more fluff to the film and create some more of a challenge for the characters and everything. Just not as easy peasy. Um, as far as the fighting is concerned and all the action and adventure, um, I did like the technology and the effects of the ghost character and how she was able to phase in and out of everything. Um, I thought I had everything figured out in the trailer, but I did learn a bit more about her abilities uh, while actually watching the film, which is a good thing. Her, seeing uh, Hope Van Dyme and the ghost character fight back and forth was freaking badass. Hope is a badass, by the way, in her wasp costume. I do like that. But seeing her fight the ghost was real nice because we have a phaser versus the growing shrinker. So, you know, sometime when like Evangeline Lily would try to punch or whatever, you know, it would go straight through Ghost and phase. But then sometime if uh, Ghost would come through and try to karate chop her in the neck like this, you know, uh, the wasp would shrink real quick and then grow and then come back with this move right over here and then shrink again and boom, boom. And they were just like phasing and shrinking and growing and back and forth like this and all that. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm. I, it was nice. So I was like smiling ear to ear as I'm watching. I was like, man, they really did a good job here of giving you um, a great example of how these characters can use their powers and abilities in battle with less than a second to think or you end up going to, you know, die and things like that. So that's great there. The overall story is just really them trying to get, um, you know, Janet Van Dyme um, out of the quantum realm. And I like that. You I mean, you have this simple task, but they keep running into all these speed bumps in the movie. And it's not annoying. It's like, hey, man, that's just a great way to, like, keep the story going and, um, you know, create challenges and things like that, like I spoke of before, you know, for all the characters. Um, as far as uh, any complaints that I do have, um, I, one complaint is I kind of felt that they cheated as far as the, um, the technology is concerned. I, I bragged on it just a second ago, how great I liked it, but it doesn't mean that it's perfect because in the first film, they made a great point to make sure that Scott Lang or Ant-Man or anybody using the pin particle technology could not grow a shrink unless their helmet was closed. But they kind of abandoned that a little bit in this film here with, uh, Scott Lang. And I just kind of, I mean, Y'all, I mean, you have to take all this with a grain of salt and suspend your disbelief, but, you know, because it's a character growing and shrinking, but at the same time, I want them to try to keep it as realistic as possible, even though this is not realistic in any sense of the word away. But I kind of, that just kind of like stood out to me um, or whatever. Also, just, I kind of wanted um, the backstory with Ghost or what I just wasn't in love with um you know i spoke about her performance but i kind of just feel like you know when they talked about her story it was just kind of just like you know kind of mushed together uh very quickly and um you know they just kind of ran out of time to execute wasn't bad i just wasn't in love with it like i i have been in love with other characters uh or backstories in that film but other than that guy the characters um across the board for the most part were just great this money was hilarious um i was laughing the technology was cool i understand it for the most part in layman's terms the action was great um this was just a nice additional uh comic book movie in the marvel cinematic universe as far as if i like this one more than uh the the first eight man i'm gonna say that i they're right there even for me right now i mean I don't know if I'm going to do a spoiler review or not, and I may, re, you know, reveal more information then. But I'm uh, I'm thrilled with uh, where these movies are now. Uh, I mean, that doesn't make sense. I uh, like both of the films the same. Um, I'll just go ahead and say that I don't like one more than the other, and I actually can't wait to uh, watch it again. If I had to rate Ant Man and the Wasp out of a one out of ten. I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Yes, an 8.5 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion for Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, have you seen it or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. If you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also go to my... Uh, 
uh, look at me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. And I almost forgot, guys. Make sure you stay after the post credit scene. I mean, stay all the way to the end. There's a fun scene at the very end of the credits. And there's also a mid credit scene that de deals directly with Avengers Infinity War. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review of Ant-Man and the Wasp. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.